Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pini, and I'm bringing you today's word for May 22nd, 2018. I'm teaching a series entitled Back to the Bible. This is part 51. Back to the Bible, part 51. I'm calling this Push Through the Pain. I, re I really believe that this message is for a lot of people this morning, people that are, are believers who love God, who who have a smile on their face on the outside, but they're hurting on the inside. That's what I'm going to deal with this morning. The message for you this morning is to push through the pain. I'm looking at Psalms 119. This is Psalms 119, verse 170. The verse 170 from the Passion Bible says, this is what David said. Take my words to heart, Father, when I ask you to rescue me, just like you promised. Now, this is a simple verse. Take my words to heart when I ask you, Lord, rescue me just like you promised. And as I was reading that this morning, the Lord really started to minister to me about David and, and his life and all the challenges that he faced. And this is actually something a lot of people really don't talk about. So what does this mean to you today? I have uh, five things to share with you on this morning. And really, um, I believe that as we look at the, the life of David and how he pressed through the, the challenges, he pressed through the pain the Lord is going to minister to us the same way to do the same thing. You ready? I'm excited. Here we go. Let's get into it. Number one, look at me. God knows your hidden pain. God knows. I know that we, we sometimes don't like to put our pain on display, but God knows your hidden pain. David said, take my words to heart. He was saying, listen, Father, I want you to consider my words. Consider my heart. Consider what I'm not saying. Consider what I'm not going to be able to take you know, say on uh, on the outside. I, I don't want to say this in front of people. You know my heart. You know the pain that I've been through. There was hidden pain in David's words, which is why he said, now rescue me just like you promised. You promised to rescue me and I'm asking you to do it. He was saying this because of some of the challenges that he had. Now, when you look at the life of David, I've studied his life. He went through a lot of challenges and, and really it encourages me because it, me, it reminds me that as a man of God or as a woman of God, you know, you are going to have to face challenges, but you have to keep going. You have to push through the pain. Um, when I look at David, let's say, for example, one of the things that I really don't like to do is wait. When God promise me, promises me something, you know, I'm, I'm ready for it. And, uh, but I, I think I'm ready, but I'm not really ready. And, and I don't recognize or acknowledge the fact that sometimes I have to be processed to be able to receive it. So, you know the story of David and how this prophet showed up at his house and anointed him in front of his brothers, in front of his father, to be the next king of Israel. But what people don't talk about is that there was a 13-year span between that day and the day he actually became a king. So, so he was anointed when he was 17. He didn't become a king, and actually he was the king of Judah at that point until he was 30. Now, he had an opportunity, and actually more than one, to kill King Saul and like speed up the process. But David wouldn't do it. He would not bypass the process. So he didn't kill Saul and he waited and he waited and he waited and he ran and he endured challenges and he waited and he ran and he endured challenges and he lived as a fugitive and he lived in caves and he did all of that. And after 13 long years of living on the run, Saul was killed in battle. Now, at that point, David took over as king of Judah, but that was not the promise. The promise was he was supposed to be king over, over Israel, not just Judah. So guess what? He had to wait another seven and a half years while Saul's son, Ish-bosheth, ruled Israel. So now basically he waited 20 years. He waited 20 years for the promise. While he was ruling over Israel, David um, had six sons during that time. And then when he finally took over as the king of, uh, of all of Israel, when he was ruling over Judah, those six years, uh, he had, of those seven and a half years, he had six sons. And then when he finally took over all of Israel, now he's in Jerusalem and he's ruling as the king and, and the promise finally came to pass. While he was there, the Bible documents at least 15 other children. It doesn't really name the children of the concubine. So it's, it was 15 plus. But now we're talking about having, you know, basically over 22 children. So David had a lot of children. Now, think about that for a minute. People today, I have four children. People today complain about having one son or one daughter and all the challenges associated with that. This man had 22 plus children and going back to like, you know, the challenges that he faced, let me just kind of highlight two things. And th these are some of the challenges we face as parents. But this one was crazy. 
He had 22 sons, or 21 sons and at least one daughter. And so the Bible only documents one daughter out of all those boys. One of his sons raped his daughter. I'm gonna let you take a second to process that. One of his sons raped his daughter. One of his sons raped his half sister. That is crazy. I mean, can you imagine? I can't, it almost like the pain when you think about what you would have to process in that is almost unthinkable. So one of his sons raped his only daughter. That's tremendous pain. Another thing that happened, and, and you know, and I could just mention a lot of things, but when um, David was ready to like prepare his successor, uh, so one of these boys has to be king, um, the Lord was preparing Solomon. Well, Absalom wanted to be the successor. And when it was obvious to Absalom that he was not going to be the successor, that God picked someone else, oh my God, this, this boy went crazy. He went, got some men, they gathered together, he started up a little army, started with 50 people, it grew to 200 people, and then he tried to basically have an insurrection against his father. I mean, he was trying to divide his father's kingdom. Why? Because he was upset that he wasn't the one. Now, I mean, and this is this came from David's own flesh and blood that did this to him. So think about the pain that that will cause. So when David says, listen, Lord, take my words to heart. There's some things, Lord, I can't say publicly. I'm praying this prayer. And there's some things I'm not going to say in front of everybody, but you know my heart and you know my pain. And I'm asking you, Father, to rescue me, just like you said. I don't have to explain my situation. There, there's a pain that's in my heart that's beyond the words. I don't have to say it. You know my heart. I don't have to explain the situation. You know my challenges. But I'm asking you, Father, to rescue me just like you promised. This morning, whatever you're going through, you may be going through something like, I'm not going to say like David went through, but whatever you're going through. And God knows your pain. God knows your heart. Pray like David prayed. Push through the pain, but also ask God to rescue you just like he promised. Number two, people who are used mildly of God are not people who haven't been through anything. I mean, this is where people say, oh man, I really want to be used mildly of God. They see a man of God. They see a woman of God being used to do great exploits. And they said, that's what I want, right? But they don't understand what these people have been through. These are not people who are exonerated from challenges. M most of the time, these are people that have been through more challenges, challenges that would have crippled the, the, the average person. But what it is, is they kept going. As a believer, you have to keep going. As a believer, you can never give up. You can never keep cave in. You can never quit. As long as you keep going, you will become the man, the woman that God called you to be. But you cannot allow anyone or anything to stop you. Number three, when you live your life as a man or woman of God. Now, there will be times. Look at me for a minute. There will be times when your public face is smiling. I mean, think about it. I've been doing this for 21 years. You think that every day for 21 years, I've you know, I, I, I felt like doing today's word. Of course not. There are times when your public face is going to be smiling and in your private place, you will be crying. It, publicly, you're like, hey, I'm good by faith. And privately, you're crying out to God saying, rescue me, God. Father, I need you to rescue me just like you said you would. God will give you the grace to push through the challenges um, but but you got to keep going. And watch this. Here's one of the, the most painful uh, parts of this is that, especially for those of us who are in ministry, that God will grace you to go out there and minister to somebody else. And you're ministering to someone else, someone else and you're helping them with their problems. And while you're helping them with their problems and God is using you to provide a breakthrough and you're seeing a breakthrough in their children and you're seeing a breakthrough in their situation, you're seeing a breakthrough and God is using you to, to help minister a breakthrough in their situation. And secretly, you can't say it in front of them, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking about your own challenges. And you're like, my God, what's up with me? You know what I mean? And so like, you're like, David, I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it in front of everybody, but Father, I need you to rescue me. Hear, the, hear my heart, hear the words, hear what I'm saying and hear what I'm not saying. I need you to rescue me just like you said you would. Number four, David, pray this public prayer. And, and he was basically asking God to consider what he was not saying in public. And we all have times like that. We all have times when we, we're basically saying, Father, I need you to consider my pain. I need you to consider my heart. There are things that I don't want to
God and you're asking God to rescue you just like you said he would. Number five and finally, listen, let me close this out. Everyone in the public wanted to be a king like David, but no one in the public really knew what he went through. See, people will see your glory, but they don't know your story. You will never be raised and presented on the platform until you get processed through the fire so that you can carry the weight of the anointing associated with the assignment. You will never be on that platform until you go through the pain. Not going to happen. That, that's not how it happens in God. So you have to be processed to be able to carry the weight of the anointing associated with the assignment. And so keep going. My message to you this morning, my message from God this morning is press through the pain. Keep going. Do not give up. Do not cave in. Do not quit. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to repeat after me. Say this. Say, Father, this is a season of expectation for me. I expect to experience your best. Now, this does not mean I will not face challenges. I am often troubled on every side, but I keep going. I'm persecuted, but I'm not forsaken. I'm cast down, but I am not destroyed. You have graced me to keep going, so I do so with a smile on my face, even though sometimes I cry in my private place. So this morning, Father, I ask you to consider my words and to consider my heart. Consider what I'm not saying. <laughs> you know my pain. And I declare that you help me press through it so that I can be the man or woman you call me to be. Rescue me, just like you promised. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. There's a subscribe button on the right-hand side of the website. Please subscribe. Get the messages. It's going to be a blessing to you. And as you head into this day, push through the pain. Do it, do it with a smile on your face. You keep going. You, you praise God by faith. And God will know your heart. He does know your heart. And he will rescue you just like he promised. God bless you.